In the mists and shadows, as flames doth fall, a twin bell tolls its dying call. An ancient land of dying light, an icon that can banish night. An open grave, a bloody sire, and from the earth comes the mire. Welcome, everybody, oh. to Curse of Strahd. Really I knew he'd like that. Hell yeah. Welcome really <laughs> uh, to another fantastic episode of our spooky Curse of Strahd campaign. I'm your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Um, lots of people will probably make a big deal about me not having a beard. It happens. Welcome wow. to my other Wait, companions, what? my players, my friends. Here they all are. Let's start with uh, the currently living players. Uh, we have Kim, we have Trot, we have Katie, and then we have Tom and Rhiannon. Um, mm, rise from your <laughs> graves. Rise from your graves. Uh, it's uh, fantastic times. Uh, we got a good one for you today, I think. I think it's going to be a good one. Um, it's going to be a real zinger. Is everyone, how's everyone? Trot's shoving something in his mouth. What you got there, Trot? Brownie? Some sort of cake? Hot chocolate pudding. I need it. Hot oh, chocolate pudding. Oh, so well deserved. A deserved boy treat spoiled. for a hardworking boy. Um, big boy. Everyone's ready? We're big good to play some DD. He's a big, big boy. <clears throat> Just put my blanket on. Hold boy. on. Just put how's big how's boy. everyone's Just game spot stop in. doing? That's me. Um, hey, yeah. <laughs> Lost it all. Yeah, lost you lost it all. Yeah, I you uh, you got a hedge fund out there, Kim. Gone. Yeah, stonks are yeah, gone. Yeah. I'm, hold, I'm, I'm holding the line. I'm holding the line. Hold the line. Hold, hold the line, Tom. Hold. 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 Honestly, I think it's um, it's dis disgusting that something like this can happen. Like these people might have to sell one of their six boats to survive. <laughs> Eat the rich. Eat the rich. How yeah. could they do this? Yeah. Spoon feed me uh, the rich, tall vampire lady from Resident Evil, please. Um, <laughs> get all the memes. Get all the like social media memes in one go. Let's do it all. Um, That's the whole week done. It's <laughs> the whole week done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get it all crammed into the same same uh, icon. Uh, well, <clears throat> once we've had a good laugh, I was trying to th I, I tried to think before the session if there was any notes to bring up. The only real major one is this mm. Sunday. This. So, Sunday, 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 episode 100 of the Roas on the High Rollers <laughs> TNT channel, episode 100. Come by, make sure you don't miss out. Uh, yeah, it's episode 100 of our TNT <laughs> show. <laughs> the spin got me. The spin got me. Um, it's episode 100 Quickly of our main it. campaign, uh, Eroes. Uh, you may have seen throughout the week on our Twitter, some wonderful new character art. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Quill oh, yeah. posted today. Oh, yeah. We've got one more. Ayla tomorrow. Uh, I'm and then so you'll... excited to show yeah. her. <laughs> Katie's the one who's <laughs> just like, I want to show my art the most. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Such we got fantastic like new this one, and we got this one. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, no, that's a shame. They're dead. Uh, um, put them in the bin. Mm. Put them in the bin. Delete. I'm in the bin. Delete them, burn them. Um, <laughs> Nina, wipe them from your hard drives. They're dead. Nina uh, they're never coming back. Nina so <laughs> well. And then she has done amazing work. Bye. She was rewarded finishing the Arose art by Tom and Rhiannon. Doing a bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, yeah, come and check that out. Uh, Sunday, if you don't watch the Arose campaign, do come and check it out. They're currently in like level 13, high level stuff. It's very exciting, very cool. Uh, come and check that out on Sunday. Um, that was really the only thing I had uh, to mention uh, this week uh, in terms of notes. So I've got a recap ready to go when everyone else is ready. Yeah, let's do it. Um, let's go. Let's go, um, gamers. Oh. I super quickly just say thank you to World Anvil who just raided us uh, with a lot oh, of Oh, thanks, World Anvil. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you, World Anvil. Last week, when you raided us mid-session, we usually just kind of focus on the session, but we really yeah, appreciate we it. Thank you. That, really. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, that World Anvil has been a sponsor previously. They've sponsored our main show previously. It's a very cool tool. Um, go check it out. But yeah, I've got a recap ready to go. Chris Trot, hit me with that title screen. <laughs> Last time on Curse of Strahd. Our party have traveled to the Wizards of Wine's winery, hoping 
for a chance to rest and gain allies at the advice of the monster hunter Esmeralda. Here, they met the Martikov family and learned of Babala Saga, a witch who serves Strahd and has been attacking the Martikovs. After learning about a magical gemstone that keeps the land fertile for the wine and a surprise attack by Babala Saga's twisted constructs, Ziki the Dragonborn Sorceress wandered out into the vineyard and urged by the mists of Barovia, dug up the green gem and took it into her body. Horrified at what she had done, Ziki and her brother Zeros fled the, vi uh, the vineyard and the party towards uh, and, and fled the party towards an ancient and tall hill to lay Ziki's symbol of her goddess to rest before carrying on. The party followed after, but before they could arrive, Zeros and Ziki were set upon by a group of brutal, savage druids and barbarians who worshipped Strahd. In the battle. Zeros was slain amidst the smoke and the flames of a burning wicker man. And a desperate retreat saw Ziki lose her life as she tried to reach her brother. The warrior dog's body nearly met a similar fate, but managed to just barely survive, along with their companion Ismark, who was brutally scarred in the attack. Rose, Jesper, and Tatiana now lead the other three into the forest to try and flee the battlefield before any greater danger arrives. Uh, that is where we pick things up. A couple of quick notes. Uh, Dog's body had picked up a magical spear, had dug it up from within the uh, the uh, stone circle of the hill, um, and I believe that uh, there'd been some healing spells done, but you were basically planning to escape and leave. Um, Limp away limp away i also wanted to point out quite a few people quite rightly called me on this uh when the uh npcs were attacking downed xeros and ziki i should have made attack rolls for them i didn't the barbarians all had advantage i don't think it would have changed the outcome but it was a very fair mistake on my part and for those of you who do check the rules when somebody is unconscious you still make attacks against them albeit with advantage so a little thing learn from my mistakes um but I still, I still think that the story outcome wouldn't have been any different, uh, given the scenario that they were in. Yeah, um, it was either that yeah. turn or next turn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, so <clears throat> we begin uh, with the survivors. Uh, you, Rose. I'm assuming you're leading them um, in this desperate kind of like run into the forest. Yeah, I think she'd be. Um favored terrain using that to her advantage leading them in a way that they can be as quiet as possible going back to well just staying away from the roads really going back to okay. probably the were ravens would we go back the there the vineyard yeah the, wizard the vineyard yeah. yeah okay um but trying to use yeah. the woods to give you some cover and and hide you from anybody that might come looking um yeah <clears throat> Is Mark and Irina slash Tatiana. Tatiana, Irina is kind of uh, holding him up and helping him along. He seems quite badly hurt. She seems quite badly hurt. You know, they've both taken injuries. Jesper and Dog's Body, how, what are you guys doing? Like, how are you kind of, are you just following Rose? Are you doing anything in particular? I remained invisible last um... time. And I allowed those two to have their interaction. But Jesper, he's struggling right now. He's kind of keeping with them. Uh, they can, if like Rose, for example, is quite astute perceptively, uh, she could hear my footsteps. So I'm definitely nearby, mm. but I'm just not interacting with them at, at all at the moment. Uh, just I think with she'd them. know that. I think she'd know that Jesper would be following. I, I don't think Rose would do anything to, otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What so I'm following. Has dog, oh, has dog body reacting to all this? Um, dog's body will be kind of panting like a wounded animal like kind of that injured kind of little mixture of pants and kind of ha, ha, as kind of you know the wounds because he's very badly wounded like and i think um yeah he's kind of just like you know you got a little uh, bit of little healing didn't you but and, not much yeah a little bit of healing but i think just like uh in terms of like role play just you know nearly dying and then coming back um yeah. and also he's probably just like doing that kind of silent sobbing like his face is just a mess of tears and snot and mud and blood and he just keeps looking over his shoulder like trying to get a last look at you know at the scene behind him like trying to see Zeke's body and and just kind of almost just not really believing it you know letting rose and the party lead him away um 
he's not really with it. He, he doesn't really. He's not really. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, really. I think that lingering sight of Zeke's charred, blackened body amidst like all the the druids and barbarians uh, definitely leaves an impression. Rose, as you're leading them away. You've, you've traveled through woods. You've even traveled through these woods in Barovia and, you know, you've never really struggled with it. <clears throat> it doesn't take long before you realize something is wrong. You know you're sure you're going in the right direction, but you're not seeing the right paths. You, the trees look unfamiliar. The mist that is always around Barovia, there's this kind of, like, dull mist and it gets thicker on the borders but it has gotten far mistier. And the mist is coiling around trees like tendrils of some beast. You almost, if you didn't know better, the mist almost seems angry. And every time you take a turn trying to reorientate yourself, um, it seems to twist and move around you. And, and again, you're kind of struggling to kind of keep where you are and and even with your expert knowledge like it's becoming more difficult to traverse and then one minute you're kind of moving at a quick pace trying to lure the others away and uh, i need you to make a like uh let's say a deck saving throw um all of us or just rose just rose because she's out ahead uh 12 plus seven so 19. Yeah. So <laughs> you managed to just like bring yourself to a skidding halt and grab like a branch as what you thought like a second ago looked like a part like a just a part of the forest floor. Um, you kind of turn your head back to check the others and then when you come back it's like a drop um, like a, a hillside drop down into a lower section of the woods and you almost you kind of catch yourself before you fall like you come to a skid leaves and dirt and pebbles all go kind of falling down um, I now need everybody to make perception checks very well Ooh, 20 unnatural Okay. 23. 17. Natural. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. 17 for Dog's Body. Um, all three of you, and I think um, Jesper and Rose, you'll get a bit more. All of you hear the beating of heavy leathery wings from above the forest canopy. You can hear this kind of like rhythmic from two, at least two large creatures. Jesper and Rose with kind of keen eyesight, not bloodied and exhausted as Dog's body and the, the rest are, you catch glimpses through the canopy and you can see flying above whatever part of the forest you're in are two giant bats with kind of saddles and very pale, lithe looking humanoids riding on their backs and they are scared, they're looking down like like as if they're searching for somebody. Um, one of the figures appears to be a tall, lithe, elven woman, and the other one is more like a squat dwarf, but both are unnaturally pale. In the um, kind of still nighttime, but you're probably maybe getting close to dawn, but not that there's natural sunlight in Barovia. Uh, yes, but breaking his silence would say, it would be wise to hide right now. Yeah, I think uh, Rose would automatically be trying to hide somewhere, find a tree that has maybe a little bit more shelter and mm -hmm. tucking herself in. Sure. Um, in that case, yeah. Whoever is trying to hide, stealth checks. Um, <coughs> Irina is going to struggle. Uh, you would be. You've not done anything to break it yet. Irina um, and Ismark are both kind of like limping and dragging each other. <clears throat> I mean, they are going to struggle to hide themselves um, without any additional help. Uh, um, yes, but... It's disadvantage for both of them. Would... Uh, 15. 15? Stealth? Okay. Knowing Jesper's already invisible, he'd uh, okay. reach out and grab Irina and try and mm -hmm. pull her into behind a tree or a bush or something like that that's nearby. Okay. Down yeah, here. Dogs, and dog's, dog's body? body will help out. Uh, yeah, dog's body will help out. Is Mark kind of just recognizing a, a fellow wounded brother in arms right now? Just limp around. Sure. Um, maybe find something right, to a... lie under. 
Sure, make a stealth check for me. Um, make it with disadvantage because you're basically trying to hide two people. Both of us? Okay, uh, I rolled a uh, no, you've got That's invisibility, 14, yes, but so I'll make a roll. I'll make a normal stealth eight, roll for Irina. 18. Is that with disadvantage, 18. yeah? With yep. disadvantage, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you manage to kind of like duck down and you find uh, an, uh, a couple of large trees um, and one large stump of a tree. Uh, the stump has almost been hollowed out. Um, you can see that it's kind of like broken away and there's almost like a little you know, cubby inside of it. <clears throat> and then a couple of larger trees. And also that kind of drop uh, that you almost fell over, Rose. Um, you can, there's, or has like a slight overhang. And you can kind of like press, uh, like probably Dog's body and, uh, and Ismark kind of lower themselves down and press underneath this kind of little lip of this, uh, this drop. <clears throat> you hear the kind of beating of the wings and the mist that's been kind of thickly growing around you, kind of sensing something begins to part around you, almost leaving this open space and it parts from the canopy, almost as if it wants you to be found. Um, the mist angrily kind of like flicking tendrils away. So it creates almost trying to drag the leaves from the very canopies away to kind of spotlight you to whatever these pursuers are. You hear the thick leathery wings drawing closer and closer. You can almost uh, hear the, these kind of voices over the, the flapping of these giant bat-like wings. And then, almost as suddenly, the canopy seems to stretch and grow. And you can see the leaves kind of almost swell with these little kind of yellow funguses growing on them. And the, the vines around you begin to tinge and this kind of overgrowth does kind of seem to semi-surround you um, just as the bats pass overhead. And you hear no change in their direction. You hear no shouts of alarm or cry. And then as the first few kind of, not rays of sunlight, but this dull gray light that does seem to fill Barovia during the day begins to rise, the flapping seems to get quieter and quieter and quieter. <clears throat> the mist still surrounds you. It still is confounding and confusing your directions. But now you begin to see almost like little glow bugs, like these little kind of like insects almost like a little path of them, like a trail through the woodlands. And that's our only direction. That's the only thing that's not covered in mist. I mean, the mist is around. Like, you could try. You could try and navigate the woods, and I'd probably say Rose can make some survival checks, but Rose, there was something... Like, you, you, you should not have gotten lost as you are. You don't know how far away from the, the vineyard you are now. The, the pace you had to run and, like, the hiding from these pursuers you don't recognize any of this part of the wood like it, it it's unnaturally uh has as you've gotten lost magically here not through any lack of your own skill something has conspired to uh to confuse you and confound you i don't know the way and this isn't this isn't something that happens to me. I always know the way. Something is wrong. The mist, something the mist. has... The mist It's, is it's led like us it. the wrong way. It's angry, uh, Rose. Uh, I know that the mist is... It was uh, connected to Strahd, but since Ziki died, it is angry. I can feel it. Um, I've... My soul has wandered the mists for so long. I know that there is a power there. And since Zeke's death, it is furious. I fear we have lost our path a long time ago. We have strayed far from our destiny, far from our fate. Look at us. We're broken. We've lost two important members of our party. And we have nothing left. Three. <laughs> <Bottom members. laughs> 
It's, just, it's grief. It's grief. Grief. Grief confused him. He had, you know, in his grief, he forgot about Shadow. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. 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 Clearly, is we didn't know which his... two. We didn't know which two members he was talking he about. He That's might true. He probably was talking about Zeke and Shadow, and then didn't include Zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two members and a, is Mark, and a pet. Uh, is Mark with his and is Mark, by the way, looks terrible. Like, like half of his face and one of his arms is just blackened with scar, like Harvey Two Face. Um, his once handsome features long since ruined. Um, and it looks raw and if, you know, it's it's bleeding. If he leaves it like that, it's probably going to get infected in these kind of like, you know, woodlands and stuff like that. But he just kind of like this well, rasping um... voice, just like, <clears throat> as long as we draw breath, <sighs> I have no intention of giving up. I admire well, um, your talking about the mists. Go on, go uh, on. Can I be patching him up with a healer's kit? I don't know, like I think it, I just feel like it's just something he would do and he's got nine healers kits, so screw it, he'll be doing it. It's basically you're bandaging him to try and like prevent like the wounds from like like getting infected and stuff like that. Um and he doesn't stop you, but like you're basically like kind of uh, bandaging half of his face and like one of his arms. Um, he can still hold it. He, it's not like the arm is ruined, but yeah, if he leaves it like that, it'll probably get infected and things like that. He needs to have it like properly cleaned and like maybe a mask or like some sort of covering. Um, but the bandages will do for now. Would magical healing help he... him better? Yeah. Would. Mm, yes, it would help no, some, yeah. We do but right now. Not against things like diseases and stuff, infections. It will give him around. some energy back. Ismark is definitely the worst of us, right? Uh, Ismark is ba basically on one hit point, uh, I think, or like five hit points, and it has like this horrible scarring. Dog's body is pretty rough as well. What are you on, Dog's body? Like under ten or ten? Uh, sixteen actually, with the spear 16. healing okay. me, um, and then Rose. Uh, well, that's gave me that's a boost. temporary hit points. Um, so like that's like you have some energy, oh. but physically your wounds are like gaping at that point. Um, yeah, so like that that temporary hit points is like you feel a bit more energetic, like it gives you vigor, but like physical wounds don't heal up from temporary hit points. So like yeah, where you've got like you had like like parts of like your ribs are broken from the great club, you've got like a deep gash along one side, like blood all down your face, you look rough. Um Irina and, and Jesper probably look pretty bad as well, because they took um a lot of I'm damage. at fourteen, yeah. Yeah. Uh I managed to escape Somewhat very good. unscathed. It's a nice thing of being an archer. <laughs> it's weird. Usually I'm at the front. So, yeah, range. Um, yeah, I think that uh, Rose is going to look a little bit at those bugs that you mentioned, mm -hmm. like the little sort of yeah. glowing Glow bugs, bugs, and like just sort of flies. see. And are they definitely highlighting a really obvious path? It's not an obvious path, but it is, is a it? path. It is a path. It seems to be some sort of maybe a mm. very, very old trail, or maybe it's just actually now that you look at it, Rose, and because you're a ranger as well, <clears throat> you have like a knowledge of the natural world and forests. Something has created a path. Something has pulled leaves and vines and tr and like dead branches into the earth. Like you can see them almost half sunken and it's created this winding path away. And the mist doesn't like it. The mist kind of is, is not being driven away, but the mist is not lingering in that area. I think I trust the bugs more than the mist right now, especially given what Irina just said about Ziki. What choice do we have? Walk into the we mist don't. that hates us, or follow the bugs. That side of us is a cliff. I'm lost. Cliff. I'm. I'm lost. I don't have your... a path. That's a path. Just then be on your guard. Yes. We don't know what is here. It's not natural. So None be on your guard. Is. Very well. Yeah. Mark kind I'll, of. I'll go. Yeah. Go on. I'll go first. You, no, I'll go you, first. You you both are caught up in this destiny. I'm not part of this story. It's fine. I'll go. I'll go. It's fine. <laughs> I like bugs. They're tasty. Good enough. I think you're too late now, dogs, buddy. I think you're part so of it now. Oh, this old dog's on. Moving ahead. Um, 
Go I'm on. on my way out anyway, it's fine. Come on, follow me. I look at his mark. <laughs> he's gonna he kind of like with his good arm he like hefts his hand axe that he's kept hold of uh and he just like gets it ready um and then the the flail's kind of hanging loosely by his side and yeah he can just I... he's like drawn the axe and he's like looking around like let's go can i give uh this. level one level one cure wounds to his mark please you can Yes, heal the NPCs. Yes, heal the NPCs. I'll give level <laughs> seven two hit points. Oh, cure wounds to dog's body. Okay. Six, uh, eight total. Tickle. Yeah, with that kind of <laughs> with that vigor do. from the spear dog's body. Yeah, I think like the most of your wounds have at least heal like like sealed up you're no longer bleeding or anything like that like your ribs the pain in your ribs ebbs away and with that kind of vigor from the spear like you kind of feel a bit more of your fighting energy come back like okay yeah if we come across something maybe i can take it kind of vibe do stop the maybe. pit of despair consuming us uh as the mist will we're going to need you dogs buddy you're with us whether you like it or not i'm afraid as i touch uh. and do the cure wounds Thanks. I think that was not a curse. Was that a curse? Was that a Vistani curse? I, I don't know. But You'd thanks. know if it was oh. a curse. <laughs> and it wouldn't feel good. I feel it a bit, <laughs> feel it a bit cursed right now, mate. Right. <laughs> curse is right. We share the moving. same burden. <laughs> Let's go. So yeah, Dog's Body, you start following this path. And Dog's Body, as you start following it, you definitely would notice that kind of down the path, like where it's leading you, it seems to lead you into like just brush and growth. And then that brush and growth is parting as you are following the trail. It's like some of it's being sucked down into the ground. Some of it's being pulled away, like some invisible force is pulling at the trees and the vines. And as you follow it, it leads you, the ground becomes more swamp-like. It begins to become more boggy. Uh, your feet kind of sinking in, pulling out with each kind of step. The air becomes hazy with bugs and uh, this kind of like damp wetness and, and heat um, that you hadn't seen before. <clears throat> and you can hear the sound of a rushing river, like maybe this area has been flooded by a river and that's why it's very swamp-like. And the sound of like wood, clunk, clunk against something wood. <clears throat> but what immediately takes your attention is the, the pathway stops as it reaches like an opening. And you can see a couple of crumbled bits of stone, uh, maybe like the crumbled vague outline of a house. And you can see that there are dozens of half submerged old corpses most of them very well preserved uh they look like they have been they're very old but they've been in this swamp for years maybe longer centuries their equipment is all rusted it's all in tattered leathers it has like fungus and moss growing all over it and this kind of spreading vine-like substance that kind of connects all of it and seems to seep into the roots and the trees and the ground and as the, the little glow bugs seem to coalesce and they kind of settle on one of these bodies and then two of them pull themselves free. Uh, Tom and Reed, do you want to describe what these bodies look like? Well, <clears throat> I was thinking <laughs> the, the, uh, some of the bodies start to move but then crumple into pieces. So then another one starts to move. And that starts to fall to pieces or like stands up a bit and then falls and submerges in the swamp. And then it lands on this one tiefling that manages to stand up completely, but it's covered in this wooden bark. Interrupt me whenever you want, Ree. Um, and that wood across the center of this body splits and fractures until it breaks apart and splits in two and there's these red vines connecting them that start to snap and crackle like away from each other and and fungus completes the rest of the body on each half for both of us oh yes yep 
And so it's like one half an actual teeth thing, and then the other half is this kind of like a fungus appropriation of like a humanoid features. Like right? the last like, of us. It does form like a skull. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, it does form like yeah. a kind of skull and shape and an arm and a leg. Um, and bits of armor still kind of cross over from it and things like that. But it's definitely this kind of one individual that's been split and then this fungus-like body has taken the rest of it. Um, maybe like they yeah. pick up like pieces of equipment off the ground, like a bracer that it puts on or like a pauldron on this fungal side and it kind of shifts around and yeah, uh, I'll leave it over to you. What's now. wrong with you? What is wrong <laughs> with you guys? See, Katie says that. I'm like, I am so proud of you guys. This is fucking awesome. And I'm kind it's of a little so bit cool. sad that I didn't die last week because I would have loved to have joined us as a throplet. Like, I'd be the ass or something. I don't know. That's so cool. It's, My God. Ha hats it's off. Very cool. It's very Well, it's, we've not finished yet. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, um, for, for uh, the Maya, um, everything we talked about, so you know about what's up with the mist, um, you can sense the problems going on in Barovia and things like that, and, and everything we talked about is fresh in your minds. Um, the, the, the spirit has led these individuals here. Like, it, you know, that has been your work bringing them to this place. I think uh, we probably start speaking in a language that we know, um, Ooh, like in, like it's speak. just a question of if uh, if anybody can also speak deep speech. <laughs> uh, no. At this no. point, Jesper's gonna equip ah! his sun sword and stand in front of the party. Yeah, Rose is yeah. gonna be drawing an arrow. I'm sick of this godforsaken land. What <laughs> have you in <laughs> store land. next for us? Well, that's new. That's disgusting. Who, who first, Ree? Who first? Who first? Ooh. Go on, Ree. I, I believe. I believe in Ree. You haven't got too long before Jesper starts slicing you down, honestly. Gonna <laughs> shoot. Gonna shoot. Lost land stalkers come this way. Welcome. We found you. Travelers what? of the White they... Dragon, you followed our path. Why find us here? Do not mock us and what we have lost recently. Be very careful with your words, cursed one. We saved you from the tasteless. Those we cannot consume. This. You saved us. And I look at Ismark in particular. <laughs> this is safe. Yeah. Irina will say... Feasting. You are the ones who start... You are the ones that hid us. When the canopy grew and shielded us from those things above. That was you? I think at that, I'll make like a lot of the land around us sort of not thrive as such yeah but it even does from some of the corpses and bodies as well they start to rise in a way uh and and yeah like kind of replicating the, what they saw with the canopy yeah so this kind of like these like fungus growths but the vines seem to swell the the land becomes enriched like this thick moss grows flowers bloom this the <laughs> land so cool. becomes enriched for a second it's just like in the swampy bog seems open can mine like <laughs> can mine like make like like just make a small swarm of like the glowing bugs like appear around me yeah 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 so one of the figures these glow bugs and like you can see lots of other insects on this one as well like spiders and centipedes kind of crawling through their body but all these glow bugs seem to like settle and kind of rest on one of these figures the same ones that led you here can I quickly um, just dive my hand into my pocket where I left that gem and feel if there's any sort of energy coming from it? Yeah. Yeah, and when you touch it, <clears throat> there's this strange sensation. Um, it kind of, as you watch, as this one of these things, as both of these things, one of them seems to be making the land like grow and flourish. The other one is controlling these insects and beasts. 
and the gem you feel like a pulse like it's reacting to this um not in a bad way like it's it, it's almost like it you can feel it like beating in unison with the land as it grows and flourishes are you this and i, I hold up the gem is this you close we are the maya the maya the land that surrounds you. We followed the white dragon for so long, but now she is with the Maya. And you are close too. And I'm looking at like Dog's body and his mark. You're close to joining us. I, don't, I am close I to don't joining like nothing. Ways. Yeah, I, I don't like the way he's looking at me. Are you he? I don't even know. I don't like the way it's looking at me. I, I, I'm not Whatever tasting. you are. I'm not. You said, you said something about the lord of this land. Are you a servant of Strahd's? If you are, we'll cut you down. Strahd what he said. Us. We hunger and have for so long because of him. It's time to take back what belongs to us. We can oh. help you up. That's really nice. Uh, but could you not look at me while you say that? Please? <laughs> Did you lead... Uh, you led them away so that you could kill us yourself? I don't understand. What do you want? We may feast. But you're not there yet. You are not with the Mire. We feast I think I'm going to slice one down. Us. I mean, <laughs> it seems like a big-ass threat. Uh, I'm going to go attack one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't help you, Tom and Ree. You've got to convince them like that you're going to help yeah. them. Like, <laughs> We hunger. Um, you're close to joining us. <laughs> I don't want to join you. <laughs> I'm attacking. This pupper feels very threatened well, right now. Yeah. I think that that would be uh, probably a roll initiative um, between the five of you. <laughs> I, was like, I can't, help, I can't really help you here. Okay, got, twenty-two. Uh, <laughs> oh, eleven. All right, three. Twenty. Uh, Seventeen. So, have you got any other characters in mind, or? <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure that Jesper will die before these guys do. So probably. <laughs> Considering oh. What happened to the HD. circus twins? What happened to that? <laughs> You're kidding? The Maya's way cooler. Tom, 22. Uh, Rose, uh, 20, did you say? 20, yeah. I don't want to get you. Uh, who was after... Who got after 20? Um, Maya, 2. <laughs> Rhiannon? 17. You got 17. Are you rolling initiative dog's body, or are you just like, nah, I'm not yeah, in here. Put three. I'm out. You got three. Um, okay. I, I I will I will roll initiative. I rolled a three, um, but I I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, okay. His mark rolled uh, a one, um, because he's slow. And okay, Irene is. I want to join the Maya, if I'm honest. Chris Trot wants to join the Maya. Yeah. Yes, he doesn't. <laughs> not allowed. Not allowed to join the Maya. Absorb Maya's me. The <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Maya. Maya Tom. Maya Tom, um, he, he, you see this man, and like you know, I'm, I'm making you. I don't think this would be surprised because you know you're very much aware of what's going on in this place you see him obviously threatened he draws his weapon and it looks like he's about to attack what would you like to do um <clears throat> i would like to cast confusion uh in the area okay. and just hit pretty much all of them except yeah okay so not you and thingy okay yeah. Uh, so each creature in a 10 foot radius sphere centered on a point within range makes a wisdom save. All right. Okay. What if DC? Well, he's already confused. 14. <laughs> yeah, this mist pours out of pretty much every area of this thing somehow, somewhere, some, somehow again. And um, yeah, to confuse all of you. But I mean, it only confuses. Rose, three the sounds of it, uh, and is and Irina in his mark as well. Oh, and then two as well, yeah. But um, 
Do you do like any like body language? Do you like hold your hands up or like do you show any signs of attacking? Um, I'll back up a load. However, I am focused on this sun sword. Uh, I'm watching it very closely. Okay. Um, so if you back up like your kind of full movement, you'd be like 40 feet away from Jesper, 45 feet away. Cool. So yeah, Jesper, you you see uh, this man thing. You're not even sure if it is a man. It looks like it, you can't even tell what the original body that stood up was. You're not sure if it's yeah. who they are. They yeah. seem to stand up. Uh, their body seems to open up. This kind of these spores release. Um, you kind of <coughs> cough for a second, wave your hand, but it just backs up. It doesn't. It just moves away from you. You mean to infect me? It won't work. Sure. What'd you do? <laughs> I go to slice with my sun sword. Uh, okay. That's what I'm going to do. Sure. Uh, all right. That is a 13 to hit the mushroom. Uh, I'm 45 feet away, so I think you're hitting the no. other one. The yeah, other mushroom. them. Yeah. Makes no difference to Jesper, for sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Maya 2 or Rhiannon Maya, does that hit 13? Okay. 13. Exactly, yeah. 13. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Do you show like any sign of trying to defend yourself or do you just like let this sword cut into you basically? Uh, yeah, I reckon like, she, yeah, she, oh, it would just stand there and yeah, just like loosely just <laughs> absorb like the attack. No, like no reaction. Just sure. That's nice. I think if you look, if you look 45 feet away, however, the reaction is shown on me instead. So I was going to say, so as the sun sword cuts through this this person, um, you see like the the energy kind of burns through, and it does it's radiant damage, so it kind of cuts like a kind of line of light. <clears throat> On a person, you would see blood uh, pour out. There is no blood uh, as it cuts through the body, at where it strikes. Insects, centipedes, flies, maggots just fall out of the wound instead. Um, but you also notice that as it reacts, as it like flinches and moves backwards, the other one that moved 40 feet away does the exact same movements. Like as if it's just been hit. It just reacts in the same way um, as it staggers backwards. What is this? What do you mean to do to us? You can re um, you can reply by the way. It's a free action to talk. So, um, as I stab with my dagger, by the way, nineteen, <laughs> nineteen hits, and uh, you have the same goal. five. Take five more damage, Re. Um, as yeah, you stab. Uh, what does Maya do? React at all? Again, like the same like loose reaction. I guess like she'll like fall back a bit, then as she comes up, she'll like rebound right into Jesper's face, like super close. And just <laughs> We only ah. wish to help. We both serve Barovia, you and I. In death, we serve nothing. Okay. Uh Rose, I think I, I might have missed you. What was your actual initiative, Trot? I can't remember. Uh only 11, so I don't know why I went. Oh, yeah, I got you and Rose mixed up. Right. Well, we'll just I just say have that to roll a like d10 react. anyway. So. Yeah, no, that's yeah, true, yeah, you failed. So roll a d10. Eight. You use your action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within your reach. Okay, uh, which is so everything. round a Rose break. is... Uh, well, it's a melee attack. It specifies melee attack, right? Oh, yeah. So this would be Irina, Dog's Body, Ismark. Those are the only people around. So I'll roll. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't want to kill Ismark. <laughs> it is Ismark. What happened? Um, yeah. So uh, the, <clears throat> you kind of cough for a second, Rose, <clears throat> as these spores kind of come everywhere. And when you look around, um, these dead bodies all around you seem to be like coming like with glowing red eyes. They look like vampires pulling themselves free. And it, it's not... Ismark looks like, you know, he's turned. You can see glowing red eyes like Strahd, fangs in his mouth as he's luring at you like and just, oh, you no. just in a panic slash at Ismark. Ismark the Maya. Uh, 
It's a melee attack. <laughs> 21 to hit. 21 hits. Damage. Nine damage. Nine points of damage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you've killed he him. was injured before. He was injured before, but he did get some healing. Um, <clears throat> you kind of just huh, and you stab into like you know where you think Ismark's chest is, <clears throat> and you just uh, then you kind of you're not quite sure what's going on. Like you're confused. Like all of these shapes are moving around. You don't really understand what's going on. Uh, others, you see Rose turn around and just plunge her like short sword into Ismark who also looks confused and just coughs and splutters and kind of seems to collapse um, to the ground. Uh, <clears throat> after Rose, it would be you, Rhiannon's you make Do I get a save, saving? Yeah, yeah yes, another wisdom do. save. And then uh, Maya, Rhiannon Maya. Uh, 19. Okay, you're That's out of confusion save. now. So okay. you kind I of think... almost come to that shocking realization as the night as the short sword pulls three covered in Ismark's blood as he just like <laughs> I think she'll uh probably drop the short sword and go Ismark no they're they've done something and just she'll just well duck down to the ground. Good choice, Gom. <laughs> Great choice of spell. Uh <laughs> Rianne's go. Can I um can I cast web? Can I make like a huge web between me and Jesper? Um as a means to kind of like protect ourselves and then move back to where um yeah. Tom Meyer is. Have a look at web. You conjure a mass of thick sticky webbing at a point you choose within range. The web fills a 20 foot cube from that point for the duration. The webs are difficult terrain and lightly obscure the area. Um, if the webs aren't anchored between two solid masses, such as walls or trees, or layered across a floor, wall, or ceiling, uh, it will collapse in on itself. But there's flooring and trees and all sorts of things. So yeah, this is a 20-foot cube. You could pretty much catch... Um, you could catch the rest of them, like Rose and Ismark and all those guys. Um, or you could catch, like, you and Jesper. Or you could catch, like... You know, what, what do you want to do here? Do you want to lay it between the two points so it's like nobody's caught in it immediately, but they'd have to move through through it to get yeah, to you? Yeah, as like as like a barrier. Okay. Yeah, between between okay. us. Okay, so <clears throat> between um, Dog's body is Mark, Irina, and Rose, and then between Jesper and the two Myers, this thick webbing just kind of <laughs> seems to stretch as all these tiny bugs skitter and crawl away, forming this like barrier between you all. Um, all of us are segmented, or is it just a split between the Mire and us? Split it's you and the Mire yeah, on one half. Yeah. On one so half. At Jesper and the two Myers on one half, everybody else on the other half. Right. Okay. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Rhiannon? Um, I think you should probably just say, uh, like, uh, you don't have much left. You need to stop and just she slowly just sort of backs away <laughs> okay do you are you gonna move enough away that he could opportunity attack um sure or just take like why not yeah okay yeah so you actually you like just back off giving him free range to make a melee attack against you if he wants yeah we wish to, to not you. harm you Oh, that changed a lot, saying that bit just then. <laughs> Before it was like, you're about to fall. <laughs> and I, was I think Jesper is definitely misread. Like, I would take a very different interpretation to what Jesper is, but sure. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, we're, is it, we're it's a very emotional, dangerous time. It's pretty fair like, enough. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think, uh, like, yeah. there's definitely yeah. a very... Like, he's missing what they're actually saying and focusing yeah. on the dying bit. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Like, we're yeah. all a bit... Guard up, head yeah, on up, edge. You know, um, it's, yeah, it's a yeah, lot yeah. on top of what they've already been through. There's no oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We just made Rose stab Jesper. Yeah, I mean, I'm interpreting the it in the way that I, I've been separated <laughs> from my party and I just saw Rose stab someone because of this misty spore stuff. Spore. Okay, look, to be, on fair, <laughs> to be fair, that spell does a lot of other things. You rolled the eight. <laughs> You cast the spell! 
Could have gone with I the have tangle, Tom. Could have gone listen, with the tangle. <laughs> listen, I have a lot of other spells. You'll be happy I used that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not I'm blind, not. I'll tell you that. I'm definitely not happy. You could <laughs> right. have used the Does tangle. Jesper, is, is Jesper making an opportunity attack? No. He is going to say, Stand down. Walk away. Or I will strike you down and I will not relent if you harm us anymore. <clears throat> okay, you say that. Irina, uh, you see that she's kind of stuck in this confusion, but then there is almost like a switch uh, as if like another side of her seems to take over from whatever this mind control is. Um, the kind of confident face of Tatiana vanishes and the kind of blinking, a little bit bewildered look of Irina seems to come back in. Like, it's almost like you see the change in personality on her face. Um, and she would just look around and be like, it's Mark. And then she goes down and is going to try and stabilize him. So she is not affected by the confusion because this is a different almost mind or personality that's no longer affected by she it. She locked it away. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and she gets down and is like, bandaging and like stabilizes is mark manages to like pull out like uh you know like plug the hole of like the stab wound um and is is keeping it sealed and, and bandaging it um with that so he is stabilized um <clears throat> she will call out and just say i, I don't know what's going on but uh, it's not worth the risk is mark's already harmed we can't afford another fight uh, dog's body. Uh, could we please just calm the fuck down? <laughs> My aura is feeling very harsh right now. You mushroom thing. You mentioned Zeke. Can, can you talk to her? Can you hear her? She is with the Maya now. But you travelled with her, so we travel with you. But if she's with you, then then you can talk to her, right? I can talk to her, right? She is no longer of this world. We sensed her. We felt her in the earth. She's left us. Well, there was hoping. Look, if you're hungry and you need someone to eat, let them go. Here, have an arm. <laughs> Fatalistic. <laughs> Unless anybody else wants to do anything else, I'll drop you out of initiative. Um, Ismark is unconscious, so he's not doing anything. <laughs> it's really down to Jesper and Rose, I think, at this point. Um, uh, is there a web still? Or has that been... The web is still there. Yeah, the web is still there. If it doesn't get removed soon... You can move through it. <laughs> you know, it becomes difficult terrain. And you can, I will start a slicing through the web to yeah, try and reach the rest of the well. party members. Uh, I think sure. Rose that. would probably slice through the web as well on her yeah, turn, knowing think... that it's Mark's been stabilized. She'll try and get to Jesper. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, if you make an action against it, you can start attacking it and like trying to cut through the webs. It takes some time. Um, as you're doing so. Um, Maya, anything you want to say? You are close to the Maya, but you're not there yet. You need healing. I don't understand you or your purpose. I, You want us to join the Maya, which means you want us dead. Our purpose yes, is to I think... heal the Strahd. Yes, it's all things returned to the soil. <laughs> Everything returns to the soil, I get it, and you are a manifestation of th the nature itself. We aren't ready to back down. The white dragon was to be after him. The white dragon is gone, and now there is no one. You worked for Asmodeus? I... Uh, Ziki? The curse? What... What... Which... What are you? We are the land. 
We are the gone, the forgotten. What devil is possessing we are, you? We are Barovia. We are the Maya. We are the Maya. I want to leave. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we want the same. Our goals uh, are shared. Uh, yes, but if I may, <clears throat> please. I am done. Uh, I am just about as done as everyone else. But um, when I was talking to Zeke a little bit, when we were all having a little grump and a little sit apart, she did mention that she'd also made a little dealio and she said something about the land so I, I think these two are that, that. <clears throat> yes but that you need to remember <laughs> you need to remember the Vistana have not always lived in Barovia you were brought here yes Barovia is an old land there was a land here before Strad these, uh, the stones, the, the markings, the old ruins, there was gods and spirits here long before Strad came and made it his land. I think, I think, that whatever these creatures are, they are a manifestation of that. They are not devils, I don't think that, I don't sense that they are minions of Strad himself. They are what they say they are. They are the land. And Strad is the land's enemy as much as it is yours and ours. He has corrupted this place. Without those gemstones from the winery, the land does not flourish here because of his influence, his dark power. The mists choke the very life of these lands. They are his doing. These are words that Jesper can understand that aren't creepy as shit. <laughs> I don't think you just said it like these that. I don't think these things are people. I don't think we can understand them like they are people. Um, what do you want us to do? I mean, I think while <clears throat> Ismark is talking, I'd have been walking yeah, you towards guys... them. Like, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, as so far there's as like I'm no concerned, hesitation. Yeah, like the well to the Maya, you're just like no longer a threat. You just walk up to them as if nothing's wrong, right? Like you're just like, I am here. The I am the Maya. Do do do. You walk up. <laughs> Fucking hell! I have to like defend myself. <laughs> like, he's not, he's not only... attacking you. He's walking at you. Would somebody just walking at you, you'd be like, I'll I mean, kill you! <laughs> no, but if they I mean, look like that, considering yes, the yes, right right now, I in mean, the pandemic is... times, yes. In the in the interest <laughs> of us being a, a party, I will not attack, but I'm definitely standing my guard. I mean, it's a yeah, creepy, you can like... Yeah. A different thing. Pulling your weapons I, out and being like, back the fuck up, buddy, is a different thing to I am attacking them. I didn't them. say that. <laughs> I just oh, I thought you said I, I'm, 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 no. I'm going to defend myself. I thought that meant I was going to attack. That's yeah, I, I mean, I'm just in a defensive stance, ready yeah, for that's right. this yeah, yeah. thing okay, that's walking that. at me. Uh, gotcha. So that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> I think if I you've got you. your sword out again, like, I'm kind of, uh, well, we, I, we, this Maya we. is, uh, we, kind of walking with our hands up almost to feel the warmth of the sun sword in a way um so the light being sun given sword. off the sun sword we haven't felt this in so long it's nourishing how do you it feels how so how do you carry something so precious and I'd be like walking up behind him, but doing, but like with my hands slowly raising too, just like slowly yeah. like shuffling. Like a it. fucking zombie, like... Ree. <laughs> Maybe. She's doing it on purpose now. She's doing it on purpose now. I can tell. She's trying to get Trot to attack. For fuck's sake! I'm trying to keep this together, Ree. <laughs> I know you are, Ismark. <laughs> It's fucked unconscious. This is the DM trying to stop yeah, the party killing is... each other. <laughs> you killed, you killed this Mark. He's down. Yeah. He didn't. Okay, but... 
He made me. <laughs> he didn't Son. make you. Uh, um, uh, as, a, as a gesture of goodwill, which I feel like I could do with right now, do you, can you two perhaps heal some of us? Is that a thing? Just, Tom, if you would like niceness? to rechange change your prepared spells, because <laughs> I saw that you didn't prepare certain spells. <laughs> On purpose, I imagine. Healing a minute ago, didn't that you? That girl's face. <laughs> no, I just Maya said have any healing. healing. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, as, hey, as Maya, as did you take any healing? I, I did, yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> 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 healing. Tom's I allergic to what he says that. He can't possibly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what class no. I'm playing yet. You're going to be so disappointed when you find out. <laughs> so, so this, as Dog's Body says that, I guess... Me, Maya, this Maya will, uh, Bug Maya. we Maya. We Maya yeah. will, like, will walk down, will shuffle over to Jesper, and I guess, like, these bugs will just start, like, like centipedes and spiders, <laughs> like, wood lice will start, like, emanating from, like, her arms, and then <laughs> crawl over, like, <laughs> crawl. It's like they're asking for us mark. to attack them. It's like they're it's coming up and going, please. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> thematically, we're doing great. Character-wise, <laughs> I understand. This is an incredible <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah. Like, in a, yeah. For a normal so party, the thing, to be trusting of this is very difficult. Here's the difficult. thing, though. The bugs, whilst being bugs and creeping gross, are radiating with natural magic because they are magical insects. Mm. They're not normal insects. Uh, and as they get closer, the as the, you know, as, as you, even if you start to pull your arms away, that's fine. As long as like they're magic, wounds on but... your hands, the the wounds on your hands begin to close. Like as the the healing spell is actually manifested by the bugs, like it's almost like as they get closer, wounds and pain begin to diminish as they they get closer to you. Your wounds. I just uh, very very reluctantly allow this to happen. Uh, is it all of us, or is it just a specific person you're targeting? Uh, I mean, it's, it's just cure one, it's wounds. Cure wounds. Yeah, yeah. It's just one person. So it's me, is it? Or... Yeah. And yeah. it is like Jesper's like pulling away, but the bugs are like coming out of every, like they're coming out of the ground, they're coming off this being. Um, and as they do, not even necessarily touch, but as they just get near, you see that this kind of glowing energy radiates out from them all, and the wounds on hands and the kind of soreness and tiredness in your limbs begins to fade. Um, as this healing magic does flow through you. Uh, I struggle with this. I struggle to reconcile. I, I respect and admire the land, but you are manifesting in corpses and you're coming at us with the, the sense of peace. And I have bugs on me. You must understand our trepidation in this matter. We have just lost two and recently three <laughs> members. How and you, you talk like of appear? returning us to the mire. There needs to be some form of <clears throat> distance <laughs> and respect How would you for like us. us. To appear, we appear as this body. We could take one you recognize. No, no, do not. <sighs> Do you have any sense of the people that walk your lands? Our emotions. I mean, emotions would be a pretty alien thing to the Maya. Like, you understand hurt, you understand pain, you understand need, um, but fear? Probably a little bit, like you would fear fire. Um, you can maybe empathize with something like fear. Um, and judging by the way this human is reacting to you, it's like, you know, a tree tries to move away from an infection or a tree tries to move, you know, or like, a, you know, things try and get out of the way of destruction. You know, it, it seems to be, yeah, uh, afraid of you. I think surviving. that you would understand fear. Yeah, survival. There's more seen, of a survival element to it. We have seen this face before in those that run from Strahd. A face yes. we never wish to see again. And Strahd is killing you, yes. As he kills us all. 
feel his fire. You feel the burning, searing. We feel it too, and we wish to end Strahd's plight on this land, on you, as well as the Brovians and the Vistani that inhabit it. So if you wish to work with us on this matter, you need to understand us a little more. We may try. You may not I mean, try. you had millennia to do this. <laughs> <clears throat> Love it. Uh, Irina will kind of like, she's been tending a little bit to his mark. <clears throat> well, we need to rest. I don't think that we can go on in the state that we are. We also need to decide where we are going. Do we go back to uh, the Martikovs? I don't even know how to reach them. Or do we press on? Uh, do we try and find this last relic that you mentioned, Jesper? The, the one that the witch has? Surely if the mire is the land, they can direct us back to where we need to go. Can we? Yeah. Yeah, you can. I, I think at this point, like the mire, you know the land well enough that you could direct them to wherever they want to go. If they want to go to the, the vineyard where... Um, you would recognize that. You know that the land grows fertile there thanks to the magic of the gemstone and stuff like that. You would, you know the were ravens. You're aware of most of the land here. Um, if they want to, if they want to go somewhere else, um, they, you know that there's a boat, like an old rickety rowboat down by the river that they could follow the river to get to, um, you know, Berez or Argenvostholt or um, all the way back up to Valaki if need be. Um, but yeah, you can you can help them get back to where they need to. You wish to visit the witch. We should go to the vineyard first. We need to give back what belongs to them. Would you agree? Yes, they deserve that. Maybe we can also rest there. Is it close? We know the way. It's close-ish. I think if uh, if glow bugs don't appear to lead the way, then red vine sort of tendrils kind of sprout <laughs> and create this path along the ground. You may follow glow us. bugs and tendrils. Yeah. It's druidcraft, just creating like these little single branching kind of like cluster of red vines. So we're clear on this. You call yourselves what do what do we call you? The Maya. We are the Maya. The Maya, right. Okay. In order for us to end Strad, we cannot become the Maya so soon. And you will not advance this yourselves, yes? Your work with us in our current form <laughs> to end Strad. You are better for us not being with the Maya. Good. You're precious to us. Excellent. That's what I wish to hear. Thank you. Why didn't you say that to start <laughs> with? That would have really done a lot. <laughs> you are close to the Maya. <laughs> you, you are, you are soon... precious to us. <laughs> Oh, okay. You said you're close. That's nice. Open with that. You know. <laughs> Thing is, is right, I hey. get where Tom was coming from with the idea of like you are damaged and nearly dying. You are close to the mire. I get it. To those guys in yeah, that situation, no, yeah. it was the worst thing you probably could have said. I know, I know. But, <laughs> 100, you know yeah, Kim, 100% you are, you are gets close it. To the Mire, body, we not don't in the want mood. That. <laughs> this is the thing. Us as players are like, this is great, we, we love it. Yeah, but then yeah. us as characters were like, can't really let that slide, I'm afraid. No, no, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> It's the biggest conflict I've ever had of like, because I like to invest in roleplay and be in my character. Yep. But I'm like, I could literally break this whole stream again. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> two more characters. It was like, you, you, so did <laughs> you did attack them. <laughs> you did do what your character would do. 
Oh, and then I mean, cause confusion. It's, it's a sire. Like, why? <laughs> I, look, I mean, Week I have that, a lot tire. of offensive spells. Uh, maybe confusion wasn't the least offensive one. But also, <laughs> there was no Very way cool. that it was going to be easy for us to introduce these gross fucking characters. They are disgusting and so close <laughs> to evil. I was. It was just yeah. one like escalation I mean, after the other. It was well. They're not even close to evil. They're just natural. Like dying is natural. They are nature. They're like yeah. you know. You yeah. are just the earth, right? Like well, everything can die eventually and gets eaten yeah. by the ground. Yeah, shadow. Would I mean, get it. what happened to um, the death is natural, twins. but turtle <laughs> twins. <laughs> death is death is natural. However, we should be accelerated. That, well, it's it's more the fact that we are literally fighting dead corpse vampires that love blood as the bad thing and dead undead corpse inhabiting fungus monsters are pretty similar <laughs> they're not yeah they're pretty damn similar yeah yeah We're, we are not it corpses was, um... i want to make that clear we are not corpses we are inhabiting corpses <laughs> yes they are living <laughs> organisms they are, they player, are creatures I get it. <laughs> yes but does not uh, I mean, it was just like he was a walking corpse Escalation, oh, yeah. escalation, 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 and then all of us desperately like <laughs> trying to push it back down. Yeah, Mark with a rapid de-escalation, and then me and Ryu with a couple of small little punches again. <laughs> well, and Trot choosing not to attack, like that was a de-escalation as well. Of like, oh, yeah, I'm you not could, going to when, make an opportunity when... attack. But when, yeah. when he started to walk towards me, he's like, I'm going to have to bring up the sword again. <laughs> I, I, I know. have to. Oh, don't pretend I didn't know I was, I was pushing the limit. He knew. Um, he knew. I know. He uh, All right. Anyway, I mean, we're at this point now where it's obvious they're not going to kill us, which is great. Yes. I think uh, that, like, all of you, these guys aren't particularly hard to, like, they're not aggressive. Like, I don't think you guys, you don't, like, like, you're not you're not like looking at them or like advancing to them menacingly you guys when you stand still the maya is it just quite like it's almost like stood perfectly still like when you're not moving is it or do you kind of sway or like is there any kind of movement there or hmm mm. i think uh maybe we um pulsate <laughs> mm. sure. especially in we in this maya's case I guess like yeah. you know, they'd stand there, but like they'd be like there. There's like bloated parts of the body or whatever, and then like there'd be like wriggling of just underneath the flesh and stuff under the. But you flesh. stand still, yeah. like when you're not like doing you it, you're just still. like stood there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. also at this point, like we we said that we know the path and we've created a path. I think at this point, like mm. this Maya, and I guess now by extension us Maya. Um, we're like facing away from them and ready to walk ahead yeah. of them. Like, yeah, you're leading yeah. them. Yeah, you're like just moving ahead of them. Like there's no, there's no concern that you're gonna like. It's just like right, it's time to go, and then they start leading the way, right? And yeah. I think it does become like clear as unnatural and as as terrifying as these things are, they don't seem to harbor any kind of violent actions like towards you guys. I think that that becomes clear in their movements and the way that they move ahead without really any. Uh, there's no wariness. There's just, yep, time to lead you on, basically. Somebody will need to carry Ismark. He is unconscious, and he is not. I will you know, kill Either wins. heal him or carry him. Kill wins level yeah, kill one. Wins. That's my final you don't spell okay, slot. That's fine too. Ismark will okay, last. So you watch his... <laughs> Four. <laughs> you get, like, another cough. <laughs> what happened? There was some Sorry. dust... <clears throat> something in the air and then did I fall asleep? Ah, my chest. <laughs> You're okay, my friend. Let's just get you somewhere safe. The undead? What about the creatures? They are Barovia, the land itself. There was a misunderstanding and now I think what? they are helping us. They're guiding us to safety. Are they... They are not servants of Strahd? No. They are the land itself, protecting itself. Let them itself. lead wherever they wish. If they are not with Strahd, I do not care. Very well. Then I'll slink him uh, an arm over his shoulder and yeah. lift him up. Yeah, he's rasping and, and desperate to rest. Um, I think Rose will cool. help, okay. but she'll be um, 
just not able to look him in the eye at the moment because she's feeling yeah. extreme guilt, even Guilty. regardless of the fact that it wasn't her in her right mind. So you're like helping prop him up on the other side and carrying him, but just like looking ahead. Cool. Okay, Maya, um, you are leading them through the wilderness uh, beyond through the Curse of Strahd. Uh, it will take some time to reach the vineyard and um, without realizing it, um, Rose, the mist seems to have calmed down as the mire is leading you, the two, you know, these two figures moving ahead, uh, this path of red vines and glow bugs kind of surrounding them. Uh, you realize in the mist confusion, you've, you, you led the party directly south. Um, the opposite direction, like the, the mist turned you around that much that you were actually leading them further away from where you wanted to go. Um, so it's going to take some time. I would like uh, the Maya, one of the Mayas, to roll a d20, please. That Maya. This Maya? Great. A two. <laughs> okay, a two. so still okay. got Zeke rolls. Brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> it's re rolls. <laughs> it is eerily quiet the Maya doesn't really seem to speak uh, you just hear the occasional buzzing of these glow flies uh, the kind of constant churn of these vines almost forming like a pathway and then as you walk past it sinks back into the ground these vines uh, dredged up for just a brief moment the forest all around you is ominous and dark the shadows even in the grey light of day uh, still seem to stretch and twist as if they are the very hands and eyes and ears of Strahd himself. However, you do not encounter anything in the next uh, half an hour or so, uh, in the next hour that it takes uh, the Mire to lead you back onto the main path that you had all led, uh, walked, um, heading to uh, the hill keeping somewhat to the woods, so you're still kind of protected. Um, but with the Mire and Rose's uh, guidance, uh, you manage to make your way back to the vineyard. <laughs> Even in the short time the gem's been gone, you can see that there is signs of decay. Uh, the the grass kind of turning brown and mottled grey as it is in the rest of Barovia um, on the very outskirts of the vineyard. Um, and you can see the ravens, uh, several ravens flying around overhead um, and desperately looking around. As you draw closer, several of the ravens land and they transform back into the Barovian figures you had uh, seen before. And they are armed. They have weapons drawn. They are wearing armor. Uh, and you see, I'm trying to remember their key names. Uh, Davian, the elder, the elder, elder man, and Adrian, his eldest son, uh, both quite with a, a very furious look. What did you do? You took the gemstone. The dragons, where are they? They are We slain. didn't take it. One did, but didn't make it. We've retrieved it. Give it to us. Uh, yes, but holds it out for them. And keeps yeah. the other hand. Davy and up. the elder man snatches it and like holds it close to his chest. Is your one Zeke's one, or was it the one that was slightly fractured from within the Wicker Man? I think Dog's Body has that one. It, it was the one, one yeah, was on fractured. the floor. On uh, yeah. yeah. So that was Zeke's one. Yeah. Uh, he takes it back and like clutches it to his heart. Oh, oh thank the morning, Lord. Thank the morning, Lord. I must go and plant this. Adrian, find out what happened. And then he makes his way deep into the vineyard. Adrian kind of looks at you solemnly. Um, his wife, Stefania, uh, his sister, Stefania, uh, beside him, just like, what happened? Why did she take it? We invited you in as guests, and one of you took this precious stone that we revealed to you. Why? I know. I, I wish we could explain her motives, and I wish she was alive to explain herself to us. However, her actions were not the actions of ours. I hope this is enough proof, giving it back. You have brought it back. You have saved uh, the vineyard. At least we still have one of these gemstones. There are uh, others, but they were taken from us. <sighs> well, thank you for bringing it back. Uh, what? You said that she is no longer here. She died? 
Did you kill yes. her? She was killed by a group of cultists. Uh, they worshipped the tree and... The ones was... on Yester Hill. Uh, they work yes. for Strahd and the witch. The ones that have encountered them before. They stole one of our gems months ago. Uh, we couldn't... They, they outnumbered us. We had no hope of uh, fighting them to take it back. <coughs> did you... Did you see their... Yes. Uh, dog's body, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. And I hold out a very soiled hanky with the crack gem on it. You found the other one. And he takes it like, oh, it's been damaged, but I think that it can be saved. I think it still will work. Ah, Friends, this returning this is, is more than enough to prove that you are allies. And... As he's looking at it, Stefania kind of like grabs his shoulder and is like, Adrian, what are they? And she points at the Maya <laughs> stood <laughs> beside you guys. Protectors looks of up. the land, you honor us. And I like almost go to reach for them. And then I recall what happened last time I reached towards someone and instead kneel down and bow towards them oh you are so fucking lucky i just rolled a natural tw uh, a 19 sorry uh for a nature check um oh <clears throat> adrian seems to like he does recoil for a second and then he softens uh, you there is something he just kind of nods i will speak with father but I do not think we have much to fear from them. As frightening as they are, Strahd's creatures are bereft. They are, uh, they are bereft of life, of uh, plant, of growth. These things are made of it. Uh, I'm not a druid like father is, but I can tell that I don't think that you are our enemy, at least not yet. And if you have helped these ones return the gems to us, then at least I can extend to you a peace. As frightening as you may be. You can yeah, see that he's like wary. Just... Yeah, I mean like yeah, go like, like, ahead. Like why don't we just like cock a head to the side, like almost in like a yeah, unnatural way, just and try and smile. Just try and do a friendly It's it's only one half, right? Because the other half, half is like all growth. So it's like yeah yeah and when and if she, if uh if re is the uh, smiling half. then i look up and my side smiles but my eye is almost like flicking in every different direction and like it's just this creaking cracking in. wooden sound as well perhaps not terrifying <laughs> your new companions keep them away from the children they will frighten them Perhaps still. <laughs> yes, dog's uh, body, yes. If, if, if I may, um, it was wrong that Zeke took the gem, but I just want you to know that without her and her brother dying, you wouldn't have that second gem back. And I think that's important that you should know. They died and we could get the second gem, so they've paid the price. I don't agree with why she took it in the first place, and I don't know why she took it in the first place, but you should just know that. It's important. It brings you peace for me to know that. I accept it. But forgive me, I mean no offense to your departed friend, but a right does not correct a wrong. What she did, like you said, you may not know the reason, but whatever it was, she nearly cost the people of Barovia the one joy they have. The one joy for the people of this land. And yes, now we have this second gem. It helps. But that does not undo what she did. You have brought it back, and so I see you as friends and allies. But that dragon, she nearly cost us everything. And with that, he'll just kind of nod. And it's not, he says it with a reverence, Dog's Body. You know, you get the impression he's, he's not trying to, like, be offensive. But he is angry at what Zeke did. And he can't just let that go. Um, uh, his wife, uh, uh, Stefani, his sister, sorry, 
just kind of sees it and says, Adrian, go speak with your father about what has happened. Take the other gem. <laughs> she turns to the rest of you as, as uh, Adrian walks away. I am... Uh, I'm just glad that uh, the gem is back, that our people are safe, and that you have brought it back. You look hurt. We need to get you rested. Um, I can have perhaps your companions... She looks in the Maya's direction. We have a small building out the back where they can at least be safe, uh, not out here in the open. But I don't... At least let me get the children up into their rooms before they come inside. Um, come and rest. We have some food. We have some drink. Uh, you've earned that, at least. Uh, and his day, a chance to is, at least have a moment of peace. Is the uh, lady still here? Esmeralda, no, she said, I think that she sensed that her time with you had come to an end. Uh, she said that she was going to go to Kresik. Uh, she said that the abbot there may be one, the, the only person who has the, uh, the powers to stand against Strahd. Um, she said that if you did, if we found you, we were going to come and try and find you to take the gem back. And, uh, there was, if you hadn't stolen it, or if there was some misunderstanding, she said that Kresik would be a place perhaps for you to uh, go to. But I leave that to your decision. Uh, come, and then she'll begin making her way back to the house and the winery. Thank you for giving us shelter once more. It's the least we can do for what you've brought back and what you've given us in addition. The last gem. We once had three of them here. Each one uh, rejuvenates a field. Uh, the last gem we've had, we've had it in our largest field, which is our cheapest <laughs> wine. The, the lowest quality grape. Uh, but now we have the second. We can make something a bit nicer. A bit more uh, uh, flavorful and enjoyable. But uh, the last, uh, well, the witch herself has it. I don't just expect that we'll get that back anytime soon. Very well. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the the Maya. Uh, we are going to rest inside this establishment. I don't know what you do. Do you just go into the soil... We will be here for at least eight to nine hours. They don't want you inside. For eight to nine hours. Please do not enter the establishment. They do not want you there out of respect. You are not... Bring discomfort? Yes. Yes, you do. I like look to the other Maya. We may rest alongside the reawakened soil near the crystal. Hey. Do not oh. take the crystal, please. Uh, or look like you're going to. We're already walking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. Um, you can feel the land, uh, the Maya. As the gem is, is like being a... planted, you see Davian. <laughs> Go on. Is there, is there like a scarecrow nearby? Um, no, in fact, uh, because the scarecrows were all being animated by Babala Saga, so there are no scarecrows. Oh, yeah. Fact, like, oh, yeah. yeah. So there okay. are some dead ones that look like that they were scarecrows, but they've been pulled apart and dismantled. So there's these kind of scattered bits. Um, but uh, in between the vineyards, you can feel it beneath the beneath your feet in the earth itself, and you see this old man kind of whispering to the ground, almost like in, in prayer. Oh, Dawn Father, thank you for returning the seed to the land. Please, may it bring a blessing once more. Um, and he seems to kind of sense something uh, as you approach, and he kind of looks up. And there's a moment where his eyes go wide as these figures made of earth and plant kind of manifest and then it kind of relaxes you are 
No creature of Strahd's? What are you? We heard your prayer. You speak to us. You speak to the Maya. You are the Maya. You are created from the earth. We are the earth. Looks at both of you. And please, let my vines grow. And he just kind of like steps back and almost like invites you to kind of kneel or crouch beside him. He kind of like shuffles out the way. Yeah, you want to kneel down? Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. As as so as we like kneel, kneel down, down, can I like, can I like, like my can my toes like dig into the earth like hands and then like I kind of like bend over without bending my knees like I just like my just flop and then my. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my claws like dig into the earth as well. So it's just like a, yeah, <laughs> floppy bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of you dig in, and uh, the two of you feel this like nourishment. You actually feel like you know energy going into your bodies. Like this would basically for the Maya, this is the same as eating and drinking. Like you are absorbing the energy of this uh, this seed, which is enriching the land in the same way that you would normally with sunlight. Like it feels like. Uh, the same as the sun sword almost like you feel this this energy flowing from it uh, as if you were feeding off natural sunlight nice creepy smile creepy smile creepy half uh, smile <laughs> meanwhile the rest of you are led back in um <clears throat> there seems to be like the smell of a, a rudimentary breakfast um <clears throat> kind of some like uh probably not bread but there'd be like some potatoes um Maybe like we covered in spice, maybe like some various spices um, to give it some additional flavor. Um, there's like a kind of thick stew, like a breakfast kind of stew, uh, some quite stale, but otherwise good looking bread um, kind of ladled next to it. The Martikovs just say like, come, come, eat, regain your strength, drink. You look the worst for wear. Um, uh, one of them, uh, Stefania, will say to Ismark like, you, we need to clean up your wounds, Ismark, yes? There is much burnt flesh that we must clean off and uh, wrap. Uh, otherwise, it risks infection. It will not be pleasant. We have wine if you need to dull the pain. Uh, and Ismark just is like, Yes, do it. I need to be able to fight. Whatever you do, just do it. Um... And if presented with a bottle of wine, he starts just chugging it. He's just like downing this bottle of wine to try and dull the plane. Um, and if you would linger around, uh, Stefania literally is like, gets a knife and is like, you know, having to like scrape burnt flesh off. And then she is wrapping it like, you know, with a, an oil. And then they have like this leather wrapping that she's putting down his arm and then they have like a like a face mask that they like kind of you know put together for him they sew together this like leather uh like half mask um as uh horrifying as it is for Jesper he will force himself to watch okay you oh, see so like his mark like around. gritted teeth just not letting out an ounce of pain. He's just like gritting his teeth, like, you know, fist clenched around the haft of his axe um, and just like gritting through it as uh, they're, they're taking care of him all. Um, yeah, Dog's body will hang around and I think is probably used to this from his days as a soldier. Um, yeah. And um, we'll just be like chatting nonsense to um is mark to just try and take his nine uh, his mind off of it and kind of almost singing okay. little kind of bat not battle songs but you know the kind of songs that Soldier troops songs. kind of like yeah, you know yeah, sometimes yeah. have yeah yeah and, like, just kind songs, of like, yeah. yeah a lot of them are probably a little rude um you know a little bit lewd in places and Maybe. like whenever you tell whenever you sing one yeah. of those there is like a faint kind of like <laughs> like there is like a couple of laughs but yeah you're definitely helping give him something else to focus on which is the sound of your voice and like maybe you tell him some stories like, oh yeah this one time me and the boys we were up to this and but there's also a kind of sadness where you know while you're focused on keeping him busy there's this horrible realization of like oh you're never gonna see 
you know, Jareth and all these other guys again, like, oh yeah, they're dead. Strahd killed them. Um, this kind of horrible reminder of what happened and stuff. Um, and I, th I think what would have happened to Xeros and Ziki would have brought that back as well, because Dog's Body found a camaraderie with them too. Yeah, um, and, like and this them. is perhaps why Dog's Body is trying to help. He's trying to keep himself busy and focus on mm. other people and just like keep his brain moving, keep his mouth moving, keep, you know, just mm. anything to stop drifting to that little corner of his mind and then pull back to just sing in mm. another rude song about how Wizard's staff had a knob on the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Stuff like yeah. That. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, ye almighty wizard uh, and his great, great wooden knob <laughs> and stuff like that, you know. It's yeah. gnarled stuff. <laughs> yeah. oh. What about Rose? Anything from Rose? I think she's just... She'll be sitting in the same room with them, but she'll probably just be sort of keeping to herself and quite quiet. I think she's just probably hit her limit of doing anything for for the day after everything that's mm. happened and losing two people. Um, yeah. I think she's just going to yeah. be very quiet. I think, um, you know, with Jesper watching kind of in this, this uh, you know, uh, desperate forcing himself to watch what's happening to his mark and the healing and things like that. Um, and inspired by Dog's Body kind of singing these rude songs, the Martikovs kind of sense that there is a need for a little bit of a morale boost and so they make an effort to make the atmosphere more jovial um they tell jokes and stories like when dog's body is kind of like you know taking a drink one of them chips in with like a like ah this reminds me i your story reminds me of one my grandfather used to tell me ah what a funny story it was and it's like a kind of half joke half limerick you know they bring out some additional food like oh yes we still have some of those cakes left over let's bring those out let's have them for a change like they're desperately trying to kind of make a more homely um sensation even if it doesn't necessarily do anything for your characters there's that effort of for themselves as well uh uh this kind of grim scene of healing is mark um as they desperately try and lighten the mood and then i think it all comes to a culmination where maybe when things grow a bit quiet um as people begin to kind of drift off and like the the overwhelming essence of it all begins to uh take hold and irena or tatiana uh just begins to sing and it starts off as a quiet, melodic song, and then it turns into this kind of um, ballad. A ballad of a handsome young prince, um, Sergei, uh, a handsome young Sergei. It's a love song. Uh, and it's about a young woman on her wedding night to her betrothed, her beloved Sergei, uh, and the castle that he's brought her to and the lands that they are going to change, lands that they are going to rule over and bring peace and prosperity to and how their love is so pure. Um, and it's nice. It's a genuine kind of nice song that is soothing uh, and just kind of reverberates through this old family home. And when she sings the colors of the wood and the tapestries and the cloths that the Martikovs wear, all seem to become just a little bit brighter. Um, and you can see that she's probably holding on to... Um, what did Ziki give her? I think it was um, it was a sketch that she had drawn of, of uh, Irina. I think uh, Ziki had drawn one of those sketches. And she's just kind of holding it when she sings. Um, and yeah, uh, you guys can have a long rest. <laughs> nice. A blessed, nice. blessed long rest. The rarest resource in all of Barovia. Yeah. Because, man, I Truly. expended quite a few spell slots fighting Jesper. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. That was what your character would do. It was just, uh, that was a... Um, what do they call it? Like a, it was like a cavalcade of, of of terrible things that happened all at once. I mean, it's very Maya. <laughs> yeah, it was very cool. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, I was at yeah. one point 
if worse came to worse and you guys killed both of the Maya twins, I was just going to say like, okay, so what's the next body that you, the Maya inhabitates? And it would be... Yeah, 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 they would just do another one. A new body. Yeah. I would yeah. just be like, right, like, come back. Yeah, uh, how, um, <laughs> how revitalized does the land look? Like, the, me and As, other as soon Maya. as the gem is in... Yeah, I mean, any of that. I mean, there was no... The, the signs, the early signs on the very edges of the vineyard begin to bloom almost immediately. Like, they go back to a fresh green. But there is a range of it. This gem seems to only affect the land in a certain radius. Um, but you okay. can see that that's already... It's returned to the land that it was before Strahd came. Um, these gems mm. stave off Strahd's presence. That's That seems to be what they do. Um, so the land is nourishing and feels uh, natural. It feels, you know, what it should be. Cool. Nice. Um, having yes. had a long rest, would uh, I attune to... Well, there's two things I took, and that's the oh. spear from the stone circle and a weird ring from Xeros' body. Yes, 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 yes. You do. Um, the spear, I can tell you, has a name. You can probably find it in D and D Beyond. Um, if you search for do, 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 blood spear, <laughs> you can have that. <laughs> it is a plus. Blood. It is a weapon. It's a magic weapon. Um, it's a plus two spear, so you get plus two to attack and damage rolls with it. It does obviously being a spear, it does do a little bit less damage than a great axe, um, but it is a plus two weapon. And also, this one has the property that. When you um, reduce a when you hit a creature with a melee attack using the spear and reduce the target to zero hit points, you gain two d six temporary hit points. Now remember that temporary hit points don't oh, stack. Damn. So once you have them, you you just replace the amount. If you lose some and you get another two d six, that just becomes the the same amount. You don't stack temporary hit points. Um, but every time you reduce something to zero, two d six temporary hit points, um, and it's a plus two weapon, which is kind of a big deal. Magic weapons hard to come by. Um, yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah. It's pretty good. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Have I managed to pick up yet another sentient weapon? <laughs> Who's to say? Who's to say? Not me. I'm not gonna say anything. Um. Cool. I'm just reading some of this background stuff on it. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, hmm? don't, don't worry about that. Right. Don't worry about that. You know what? Okay. Kim. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, don't about, worry about, it. about it. You know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then, did I actually give this? Um, Tom, do you remember if I gave the I ring a name, a or was ring. it just a ring of protection? Yeah, it was. A, did I actually call it Sergey's uh, wedding band? band. Yeah, it was just called wedding band. I'm to not Sergey's. It's called wedding band. Okay, yeah, just look up wedding band. Pretty sure it was something like that, anyway. Wedding Such wedding. Band. Strange wedding band. It'll it's be called wed strange wedding band. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and when you wear it dog's body when you put it on it does it will magically resize to fit you um when you ex if you look at the ring you do see i think i described it as having the name sergey written on the inside of it to my beloved sergey when you place the ring on uh, it's a ring of protection so you get plus one ac and plus one to saving throws but whenever you are near irena there is just a sense of um when you're not near irena you have a sense of grief and sadness um, that kind of just dwell on you. Those feelings disappear when you're near Irina and you are instead filled with a kind of a sense of peace and happiness um, that maybe Dog's Body hasn't felt in a very, very long time. Um, mm. As if you're, be as if you were, as if Irina is someone precious to you uh, when you wear it. But everyone is precious to me. No, fair. <laughs> then. A, a little bit, perhaps nice. a little bit more so with Irina. Perhaps she begins to, yeah. you know, somebody very close, close to you. Um, mm. Interesting. Sure. Interesting. And yeah, you guys complete a long rest. The Maya, by nice. the way, I'm assuming you guys just rest outside. Do you just like, like lay in the earth? Um, <laughs> Do the others come out and find you just kind of like lying like corpses in the ground? Uh, hmm. Do you want to wake up before them? Yeah, you could do that as well. Oh, we could do that. We could do that. Uh, oh, the thing that you described is very cool about us resting. 
Oh yeah. 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 No, that happens instead. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. If you so do, uh, if you when the rest of you yeah, finish the long rest, rest, you're not really sleeping because this is a long rest. You guys like were like just resting in the Martikov's house, so it's a mixture of like napping and eating and taking a moment. Um, when it finishes, do any of you go to find the Maya, or do you just kind of make a plan no. and then you're going to go find them later? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with the kids. I'm playing with the okay, kids. Sure. Um, eventually the Martikovs will be like, they'll come over to all of you and say, uh, Adrian, this is, will be, so what is your plan now? I know that you spoke of trying to reach Babala Saga. She has something that you were searching for. Yes, another important artifact that hopefully can assist the end of Strahd. Well, whatever we can do to help. She has some of our children, but... We can't turn away from after you've helped us with the gemstones. Uh, bring us, bringing us back that other one means a lot, and there's a way that we can help. We will try. I hope we've caused a big enough of a dent in those people that worshipped that tree to stop them from pursuing your gems again. At least. I hope so. I think so. They were a strange lot. They live in the hills and the mountains and the woods. Um, but I think that they had mostly all gathered at Yester Hill. So if they're all dead, then I suspect that we will at least be safe for some time. Myself and uh, my sister can take you to Berez. Uh, that is where the witch has made her lair. Uh, we can show you the way if we need to. Uh, it's some a bit of a travel from here, but we can show you the way and help you as well. We'd appreciate that, thank not you. Be... She is powerful, as I mentioned before. You may wish to consider how you intend to acquire this relic, whether you are intending to speak with the witch, steal it, fight her, I don't know, but consider your options. Uh, when you're ready, we'll leave. The two beings, those things that were with you, my father said he spoke with them, uh, that they... He left them out in the vineyards. Uh, I haven't seen them since. They have not come by for warmth or food or anything like that. Uh, we only met them hours before you met them. <laughs> there was a strange presence that they helped part the mists. And initially I thought them to be manifestations of Strahd, but they... They assured us that they were not, and that they were against Strahd, and they were the land itself. So as abhorrent as, uh... as they are. Go on. They are yes. on our side. They are frightening, but many parts of the natural world can be, can be frightening. The dark can be frightening. My father is, he knows a little about the land. He's worked these vineyards for many years, and his father before him, and his father before him. <clears throat> they are no servants of Strahd. He assures me of that. And uh, I think that the mists, when they came to Borovia, they came with Strahd. When he gained this dark power over the light and this ability to drink the blood of the living, the mists came with him. But before that, it is said that his lands flourished and that there were those who could speak to it could understand it, that it had a mind of its own. I think that perhaps, I think that perhaps those things are that spirit. Yeah, and a desperate, what has driven it to act now is the greater question. Why now? Why allow Strahd to ruin and starve this land, to destroy it for so long? But now, what has changed? What has driven them to manifest in this way? Nothing like this has been seen before. I agree. Whatever they seems, are. It seems unnatural. However, maybe it's a last resort <laughs> for the land. Yeah, perhaps. Whatever they are, I hope that they are useful to you. It seems to be that uh, Me too, at least they are not a threat. <laughs> I believe they will be. Well, when you're ready, 
let me know. Until then, uh, our house is, is your home. Uh, he just nods. Thank you. This respite has been... You don't know. We needed this. Yeah. Thank you. Puts a hand on your shoulder, Jesper. Looks you properly dead in the eyes. And with a very serious expression, he's like, No, we know, friend. We've lived here a long time. We know what Barovia does to people. We know how important a song and some wine and a stew can be. Simple things they are, but important ones in this land. We know what it is like to lose, to lose hope, to lose loved ones. We know. He just kind of pats you a couple of times and then heads off. Oh. Cool. So, it's the plan. Well, let's go see our, uh, our strange friends and see if they will assist us. Sure. So, dog's body rose. Yes, but you guys make your way outside to go find these strange beings. Oh, I'm, what you find... I'm already oh, outside and I'm, I'm like... Okay. But I'm running around with all the were-raven kids. Like, we're just playing tag and we're just, like, being okay. children. That would be in just, a different like, field. playing around. Sure, they chase you yeah, around. Just like nice We're just and chasing each other around That's the house, gonna, like yeah. The kids have been purposely told <laughs> not to go into the main field. They've like oh. been said like you're not allowed in there. Uh and the parents are watching okay. closely. So when Rose and Jesper make their way out to go and find the Maya, what you find <laughs> is in the middle of the vineyard, no harm, you don't like everything seems fine, nothing's been dug up. But there is just like their bodies have almost been covered in this like vine-like moss and fungi that's almost kind of connected them to the ground right like that was the thing that you guys were talking about um yeah like and it's spread. red weed that's entangled around us and this bark-like substance that has bound us together and to the ground um it's gross yeah. it, ain't, it ain't pretty but from it new grapevines seem to be sprouting like new grapevines uh just the little buds of them like the actual natural growth is actually sprouting from this all of these strange alien type growth and then as you draw closer yeah you begin to hear like snapping and creaking as the two forms sensing something like <laughs> pull themselves free uh you've come to seek the mire you trust in us now Oh, it's going to take some getting used to. <sighs> I look at Dog's body. I'm just kind of the the natural. Oh, no, Dog's body's not there. In which case, I look at children. Up. Wait, Rose is yeah. like <laughs> as unreadable as it comes. I kind of look at Dog's body as like the no filter <laughs> response to these sorts of things. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I... I don't know. I think Rose with the mire is reacting to it because it's just so bizarre and Weird. she she's she's Gross. looking more she's looking more untrusting as well as disgusted at the same time like she's very she's very much keeping her distance and still like watching them very Mary. closely i think mm. yeah so you will join us on our quest if our fates are intertwined then i suppose you could be of assistance to us and us to you. We are heading towards Baba Lazaga. The witch. The witch. The witch. She holds a crystal. To reform the land. You will follow us to the witch. Good we luck. have a guide, but okay, we'll follow you too. A bastion uh, against Strahd himself. He has a debt he must repay for what he has done to us. And with that, we end tonight's Curse of Strahd. He owes us money! <laughs> he doesn't owe you money! He does not owe you money! <laughs> Strahd owes me money! Hey, no. He does not He's owe you money! money. He does not! <laughs> Bitch, where's my money? <laughs> <laughs>
You got your two-headed ogre idea. I'm not giving you the Strahd owes you money idea. He owes you <laughs> land. That's what he owes you. He owes you dirt. Which better have my um, money. Oh. Well, that oh was my a God. session. Bloody hell. <laughs> I, I was really worried I about it. that. I was oh like, my God. Fuck me. I'm so like, happy. Everything made sense. Everybody made decisions that suited their character. Maybe the confusion is the main thing I have the issue with. <laughs> the thing is, like, there's two results out of 10 that is they attack. Uh, yep. And. Do you so, know, Tom, let me tell you something. Fight, the spell in. The spell Entangle has a zero out of ten chance of anyone being like <laughs> taken damage or being attacked. And who did who did we end up yeah. hitting? The one guy who was on death's <laughs> doorstep. Really um, hang on a minute, uh, Katie. Sorry, who did you end up hitting? <laughs> oh, you are All not beast. in any way. All beast gets it. donations quick. <laughs> You cannot um, me. Why are you like this, Tom? <laughs> why are you oh, like yeah, this? Tom, why are you like this? Rhiannon we doesn't just... bloody help when she's like, I'm going to walk over to Jesper like... It's like D&D &D <laughs> in hard mode. <laughs> Serious hard mode. Know. Literally. I know. With Rhiannon and Tom playing joined siblings or a joined person of any kind is literal oh. like oh my god hard mode what the hell do we do because it's just like Fair. first first it. of all Zeke and Zeros were so conflicting for the party and then <laughs> now we've got this yeah. and we're like well I, I think that the Maya the Maya will be much easier than Zeros and Zeke because the Maya's goals very, are very much yeah. aligned with straightforward yeah there is that. no deals, they are no there. shenanigans. Just no deals, zero no shenanigans. Deals. Yeah, yeah. Very black and white. Uh, well, we do like to consume, though. We do like. To I mean, consume. if you find some bodies, there's nothing wrong with you that. You really emphasize that in our first impressions as well. Yeah, you, close, you said well, consume close to a lot. Turning. <laughs> yeah, you are. We must I think we're going to need no, some lessons in etiquette. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Like, dog's body can maybe teach the Maya how to like converse with people Smile properly. I I already <laughs> have a, a, an idea in my mind of a conversation I want to have with these two next week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Definitely wants. To yeah, <laughs> friend, um, right. your friend. Before... The dog's like friend. This one looks like a stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, don't chew us. Um, before I <laughs> get on into you. the that donations, ain't wood. <laughs> that ain't wood. I don't know what it is. Uh, I wanted to say that, yeah, this was a character that me and Re created in Tuesday live on Chaos Twins. So if you want to see the creation of the Maya, yeah. then uh, check it out on the Tuesday stream uh, or on YouTube when it goes up. We'll be up when this is uploaded. It's very fun. Uh, yeah. Man, as a point, the, the actual the hive mind idea originally came from chat and then um, Re and Tom yeah. and I kind of helped develop it and then these two have added all the main personality and stuff to it but yeah it was a cool the name idea itself chat as well. came I from mean, chat too yeah, like it was I a very think, yeah, community yeah. driven character i mean rhiannon and tom are like that in real life if you if you sometimes just listen to them if they're talking it's like they're speaking a different language that literally nobody else understands they yeah, just go just off like on same one. Brain. when they're on a certain when they're in a certain mood <laughs> that's it you're not like tom, same brain. for the rest of the day every time it's like hey hey Rhi. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, there's this other <laughs> yeah. conversation going Literally. on. Literally. It's yeah. thing. It's their hive mind. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we know. Um, it's insane. Yeah, we know. Yeah, I was thinking Girl that one. too, Ree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, perfect. Yeah, me too. Whoa, I wasn't thinking that. Good Lord. Well, I can't think sorry. that live on stream. Um, well, neither can you. Should we, shouldn't we think the same thing? I, I happened to catch I happened to <laughs> catch earlier someone in chat say we didn't start the mire and now that song is oh, yeah. yeah that's we been in my head start yeah the mire because oh, it's always growing and it's always also, sowing we didn't start the mire if you guys mire. die can I just point out that mire rhymes with so many things cuz so you can just come back as the fire the sire, the tire, no, it's not the because buyer. it rhymes. You want to buy stuff? Because it's the land. Danny Dyer, <laughs> the Dyers. We <laughs> are the Maya. Um, Someone yeah, write also, one of those is... really long verses to that song that nobody actually knows the word to <laughs> until it gets to the chorus. 
right, right. Well, yeah, no, there was a donation. There was a donation during Chaos Twins that uh, was like that. Oh, here it is. Yeah. We didn't start the Maya. It was always worming since the Strahd's been lurking. We didn't start the Maya. No, we didn't blight it, but we're here to fight with Esmeralda, Weravens, Jesper, and the Huntress. Oh and then God. that's where it ends. <laughs> I want more of that. Uh, yeah, oh I want God. the whole song. Yeah, more of that, please. <laughs> uh, so anyway, good. and uh, yeah, during that stream, there was also some fan art. If you check the Chaos Twins ch uh, channel mm -hmm. in the Discord, there's already some fan art of the Maya from just that creation stream. Anyway, anyway, also hey, read through some read stuff. Through stuff. <laughs> yeah, read through some stuff. Show it. Go on, show it I, off. Hold up. I couldn't get the image out of my brain. Oh my god, that's <sighs> awesome. Oh, I love it. Maya. Why would I rim. not attack that? Why would I not attack that? <laughs> 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 wow oh my god um anyway we had a donation from where zombies for a quarter hundo saying so excited to see oh, yeah. me and tom's new characters i only work till 4 30 p.m est parents let chaos reign i don't know when 4 30 p.m est is to us time uh but hopefully it's before the stream began where zombies i don't know thank you very much growing obsession I know. with 34 dollar dues uh, finally managed to catch you guys live since working from home. I've had your Curse of Strahd streams oh, in the nice. background and finally caught up over Christmas. Excited to see where you guys go alongside our own Curse of Strahd campaign. Probably very differently. Oh, um, cool. Purple Guy. Purple Guy has donated with, The land can't be harmed if the Maya is armed. <laughs> Why are you <laughs> salad <laughs> fingers? Why have you become <laughs> salad <laughs> fingers? You got any rusty spoons? Oh, Varys. No. <laughs> oh, whoop, uh, there it is. <laughs> Varys with a donation and no message. Thank you very much. Ruben Adams with a hundo and a quarter. $125 wow. in right. dues. Good Thank lord. You very much. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Ruben Adams says, Hi, hi, rollers. Thanks for helping me through some low points in my life with the amazing content. Been watching your content since Lightfall. You reinvigorated my passion for D and D. Keep up the amazing content. I love oh. to hear that, Ruben Adams. I am so that's happy awesome. that D and D is yeah. back in your life as a result of this, and that's very cool to hear. Um, very yeah. cool. I hope you have some amazing games as well. Uh, thank you very much. Happy rolling to you, bud. Keep yeah, not don't read. You you are the one that should not be blessing people's roles. Definitely not. <laughs> well, Definitely their not. roles will always be better than mine. They can't be as that's bad. True. That's true. Yeah. That's that's why Raylan's if roles it's... are so bad. She gives her luck away too much. That's it. Yeah. yeah as long as it's higher than a four, you're doing better than Ree. Um, <laughs> hamster tickler. Let's see it, Ree guarantee. <laughs> hamster tickler has donated with. I was enjoying the wonderful podcast of the last last episode of curse of ziki while running the other day and i had to stop a couple of times to laugh out loud people must think that i am crazy <laughs> now they think you're having the time of your dang ass life and if they confront yeah. you then you just say curse of ziki bitch and then you <laughs> run away run <laughs> away have you ever been on a really quiet bus and listening to I've I've done this like eight years ago I was sitting listening to a podcast on a bus and it was just deadly silent first thing in the morning but quite busy and I was and I just started laughing and <laughs> there's a lot of looks that you get when you do that. Ah. More power to you. Laugh away. Yeah. Laugh strong. Laugh hard. Laugh yeah. directly Better in the face. Me singing Disney uh, yeah. out loud yeah. on the bus early in the morning because that's what I do. So <laughs> It's just like me I'm mouthing along. You're having a good time on like... public transport, which is, you know, yeah. it's a rare You're thing. You're winning. Yeah. <laughs> Embrace <Rarity>. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nightjar donated with, the Maya really need to work on their people skills. Uh, no, I think yes. these guys need to work on their dying skills. Um, and mm. then they can join us. Yeah. And try, but we can all we can be Maya. We can all be uh, Maya. Cause <laughs> <laughs> everyone. <laughs> No. Sam no. Wise, <laughs> <Ben Cole 50. laughs> um, Wise twenty four fifty. We know who you are, Sam Wise. We know who you are. Hey Tom. Hey Re. Hey Tom. Hey Re. Oh, and also, hey Katie, Kim, and Babyface DM Matt. If Mudkip was still here, he would be having a field day. There was so much chaos. If Tom Re died again, imagine what Nina would say. The ground would break. 
<laughs> Nina does have to I play already, in my I'm wondering, voice. I'm also wondering what Nina's going to do for this art. She hates it. <laughs> She's going to hate it. the idea of it. She's, She's like, going to oh. hate it so much. <laughs> knowing what Nina likes to draw. This is like... <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, she's in yeah. chat. Really she's funny. like... <laughs> <laughs> there is Gary. a lot of great um, uh, fan art that can be used as like a, you know, to give you the idea. And Ree's got art as well, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so enjoy that grossness. Um, <laughs> fail of fail draws. Uh, I knew hey. bug zombie tieflings were happening, and I was st I still wasn't ready for how gross it was. Cool, but gross. One question: <laughs> If it was just one body originally, does that mean one Maya has a tail and the other doesn't, or that each has half a tail? I didn't think about the tail. I know we've each got one horn and then one mushroomy, yeah. like gross Face. horn on either side. Yeah. but I don't know about the tail. Hmm. Half Maybe of it's mushroomy. Tails. Not all you don't have one to have day. a tail as a tiefling. <laughs> it could just Maybe be like a vine. Like off. one of them has a tail and the other one just has like a tendril a vine, vine thing. Yeah. Mm. You know what, Ree? You have that tail. That's yours now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so gracious. Um, you know what? You have the tail, buddy. <laughs> you have that. Give me the gross uh, stuff. <laughs> but can my tail be made up of swarms of stuff that you've created. Just oh, so I've me. got one of your vines. <laughs> <laughs> Strahd, call me Myron. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was anyway. trying to work out. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, Carry on. New okay. Alex. New Alex. I really love the Maya, but if they hold their hands and start singing, ring a ring a roses, I'm out. Well, maybe we could do that. We do I'm like in. roses. We do we like, like roses. They grow very nice. We do. Anyway, Ravager 4. The Maya, the Maya, the Maya. Oh, ho, ho, yes. How deliciously creepy. Can't wait to see how this plays out. Until Chris and Katie slaughter them, I mean. Uh, yes, but and Rose. Anyway. Looking forward to next week. Thank you very much, Ravager 4 and Samwise2450. In the voice of, hey, I'm walking here. Was walking down the street in town Barovia, <laughs> and this crazy taxi just hit me. Me! I shouted, hey, I'm walking here. It turns out it was Strad. He was driving. Then I remembered he owed me money. He owes me money. I can't rest now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? That's the donation? Oh, my God, Sam. Okay. It. So I love it. Sam. <laughs> Thank you. so much. Um, and that is everything <laughs> from the High Rollers donations. I will check the oh, staff okay. room of the High Rollers Discord. There was gifted subs from Purple Guy, Derogaday, KB Mans, JD Crips 92, Longer Bala, um, Drifting Ronin, Ruben Adams, and Viz T. And also some bit donations from Extreme Psy and Lord Dreamer, who says, looks like a certain vampire is due for a trip to a nice sunny field if they don't give us the money. <laughs> he owes us money. The money. He owes us money. He doesn't owe you money. He does not owe you money. I'm sorry. Uh, I said at the end of the episode, on that. I said at the end of the episode, he has a debt to the land and he, he must repay it. Yes. And that's fine. It's not a debt of money. It's not gold. <laughs> it's not money. Tom, he owes us money. Strato's a bloody. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. Please end this. But Please end, end this. It. Just Please. close it. I don't care. Bye. Bye, everyone. I'm We're done. Next tired. week. Thank you, everyone. We're out. I want to go to bed. Alar tomorrow. Look out for the new Alar tomorrow. Episode 100 on Sunday. Episode 100. Bye.